This is the all-new Nissan Aria. It's an electric SUV that's a rival to cars like the Tesla Model Y, the VW ID4, and the Ford Mustang Mach-E. It's got a claimed electric range of up to 310 miles. It can go from 0 to 62 miles per hour in just 5.1 seconds. And in this video, we're gonna tell you everything that you need to know about this car. But first, make sure you're subscribed to our channel because we've got loads of new car reveals and reviews going live every week. And if you wanna buy a new car, get a great deal on whatcar.com. Before we start with the Aria, let's talk about the Nissan Leaf. It was Nissan's first electric car and they sold loads of them. But in recent years, we've seen better EVs come along and overtake the Leaf as an overall electric car package. After all, while it was groundbreaking 10 years ago, even the second generation model from 2017 is now beginning to feel a little long in the tooth. But still, because of its sales success over the years, the Leaf's legacy will be that of a proper EV pioneer. So the Leaf has given Nissan plenty of experience ready to launch this. But what actually is the Aria? Well, as you can see, it's an SUV and a pretty big one too. It's bigger than the Qashqai, closer in size to the X-Trail, but if we're talking electric SUVs, then actually the dimensions are very similar to the Tesla Model Y. Now, the Aria was first revealed as a concept in 2019, and you can see that going from there to this production version, the looks really haven't actually changed that much. So you've still got this swooping roof line back here, which gives it almost a kind of coupe SUV silhouette, and there's lots of strong lines on the bodywork as well. There's 19 inch alloys as standard, but these are the optional bigger 20 inch alloys. And at the front, you can see it's got these really distinctive, super slim LED lights. Plus there is a backlit Nissan badge, which has actually got 20 LEDs behind it. But when you put the car into drive, the lights turn off. But what do you think? Is this the best looking electric SUV on sale? Make sure you tell us in the comments below. Inside the Aria, you've got a really sleek, minimalist look and this is technically a prototype model and it's a European spec version rather than a UK specific one. But from what we can see here, all the materials feel good quality and the fit and finish is impressive as well. So lots to like there, but there aren't that many physical controls. So you've got a 12.3 inch touchscreen here, but it's not actually working at the minute, so I can't show you what it's like because again, this isn't a fully, fully production ready version. Underneath that, you've got these aircon controls, which although they're not on a touch screen like they are with some other rivals, it's still a little fiddlier to use these than it would be if they were just simple dials and simple physical controls. Down here on the center console, you've got some more of that style of button to adjust the different drive modes and also to turn on e-pedal. Now that is something that we first saw with the Nissan Leaf. And when that's turned on, it means when you lift off the accelerator, the car will slow down to a complete stop. So it means you can basically drive around town, hardly ever having to use the brake pedal, which is really good, something we've liked on plenty of other electric cars as well. Great that the Aria gets it. What other tech is on offer? Well, there's another 12.3 inch screen for the digital driver display. There's a head up display, and there's also adaptive cruise control with lane keep assist. And the adaptive cruise control can recognize speed limit changes like plenty of other systems can do as well, but the Aria will get that. So if you're on the motorway and you suddenly go into a 50 mile an hour zone, it will slow the car down to match that speed limit. There's a few other nice touches around as well, like that strip of interior lighting around the top of the dashboard, and also this kind of honeycomb effect on these lights as well. Plus, there's supposed to be a tray you can actually pull out from the dashboard itself to rest your laptop on and use the home office. And this center console can move, which is quite neat, isn't it? And under this, you've got some wireless phone charging, another storage tray here. Underneath the whole thing, there's another tray with a couple of USB ports and a 12 volt socket. And you can see down here, you've got another big open space there like we have on other new electric cars that we've seen recently too. Now, there isn't a great practical addition in having that, but it does just help give it a nice open, airy feel. And really, there is no problem with space up front in the Aria. Space in the back is also pretty good. So you can see I've got loads of leg and knee room here. I can really properly stretch out and get comfortable. And if you're just under six foot as I am, headroom is also pretty good too. So certainly doesn't feel cramped back here. Although the thing to point out is if you're sat in this middle seat, then you will definitely want this center console moved forwards. 
the boot is 468 litres, which is reduced to 415 litres if you go for an all-wheel drive model. Now, even at that maximum capacity, it is a little bit less than what you get in a VW ID4 and also a Ford Mustang Mach-E. But you can see it's not exactly small, is it? The boot here, it's nice, big, open, got a simple shape with some decent side storage as well. Plus, like other Nissans, it's got this really handy boot floor where you can lift up this front portion, slot it into the middle to create this new storage compartment here. And obviously this would be quite a handy place to store the charging cables as well. You can even remove all of this and flatten it down. And if you do, what's especially handy about that is that the parcel shelf can be stored down there too. And also on every Aria, you get an electric tailgate. But enough about practicality, because being an electric car, you're gonna to want to know about the range and probably about the performance. Well, I can give you some headline figures there. And the Aria will have a claimed fully electric WLTP range of 310 miles. And the quickest version will go from naught to 62 miles per hour in just 5.1 seconds. Those numbers will depend on which model you go for, of course. In all, there are five versions headed to the UK. There's a choice of 63 kilowatt hour or 87 kilowatt hour batteries with either rear wheel drive or four wheel drive. By the way, E-Force is just the name that Nissan gives to the Aria's all wheel drive system. If you want the big range, then you'll want to avoid E-Force and instead go for the 87 kilowatt hour battery with two wheel drive. That has the claimed electric range of 310 miles. For the quick 0 to 62 miles per hour time, you'll need the Aria Performance. That gets 389 brake horsepower and a range of 248 miles. The smaller battery with two wheel drive can take you 223 miles between charges and four wheel drive drops that to around 211 miles. An important point to make up here is that the Nissan Aria will accept CCS fast charging. That's significant because the Leaf uses Chadamo rapid charging. While Chadamo may be popular in Japan, it isn't quite so dominant in the US and Europe anymore, where CCS connectors are quickly becoming the preferred way to get a rapid charge. If you buy an Aria in Japan, it will still use Chadamo, but in Europe, your Aria charge port will look like this, just as it does with this car's rivals. And how about those other electric SUVs then? How do they measure up against the Aria? Well, from what we know now, the ranges on offer in the Aria are pretty similar to the Skoda Enyaq VW ID4 and even the Tesla Model Y. But remember, these claimed WLTP ranges are often difficult to achieve in real world driving conditions. To see how far electric cars will really go on a full charge, click the link to visit our real range database on whatcar.com. The pricing, meanwhile, is expected to be there or thereabouts with its rivals too. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but it's likely to start around £40,000 in the UK, not including any reductions for the government plug-in grant. It's difficult to describe that as cheap, but it does keep the Aria competitive against its rivals. So that was everything you need to know about the new Nissan Aria. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and do subscribe to our channel for lots of new car content every week. And if you're in the market for a new car, make sure you go to whatcar.com to get a great deal.